I've been busy experimenting and today I'm going to bring you some super easy techniques to get your 3D prints super glossy or even furry. Confession time, I hate sanding. I'm just not patient enough and that's why CNC and 3D printing in particular appeals to me so much because there's so little I have to do with my hands after the part comes off the machine. With 3D printing, however, the layer lines and the texture that creates is definitely an acquired taste. For purely functional parts, it doesn't make any difference at all, but for all of those cosmetic prints, this video contains several techniques to de-string, gloss, and even fur your 3D prints using post-processing techniques. We're gonna start with an old classic. This is a roll of ABS filament available from X3D and some acetone from my local hardware store. In case you didn't know, acetone is a solvent for ABS plastic, which means it can dissolve it. To control this precisely, I like to use an old rice cooker, which I have very lightly modified. Firstly, I have this aluminium tray that sits on the inside and it provides a flat, shiny surface to stick my parts on. Next, I modified the lid by taking out one section and putting a semi-transparent plastic, in this case polypropylene, because acetone doesn't affect it. When you add the acetone in, you only need a tiny little sprinkle at the bottom. In this image, you can barely see it puddled around the corners, but don't worry, that'll be enough. A warning that if spilled, acetone will destroy a lot of surfaces. I have two test models for this experiment, this low poly fox, as well as this low poly skull, both by Slavic. They're placed onto my tray at the bottom of the rice cooker and now comes the important part. I close the lid and I start a timer for one minute and I flick it to the cook setting. As soon as that minute finishes, I flick it back to keep warm. What happens if you leave the heat on for longer than this? Well, it seems to boil on the surface, which could be a useful look in some cases. The acetone will turn to vapor inside and it will look pretty subtle. For this print, I left everything sealed up for around 30 minutes. You might notice here that I've taken the rice cooker outside before I open it because there'll be a massive gush of fumes which you most definitely do not want to inhale. I give it a minute to clear and then I pull out the holding tray and I put it on some cardboard to air dry. It's really important not to handle the prints at this stage. The surface is actually really gooey and you'll leave permanent fingerprints in it if you touch it. Here are our final results after several hours of drying. This ABS skull actually delaminated from the ABS shrinking. You can see on our after on the right, it's actually been melted back together. Our low poly fox is similarly much more smooth, but also missing some detail. There's generally going to be a trade-off with any technique like this. And in this case, you're choosing between surface gloss and surface detail. Next, I printed this fan duct in ABS. It's gonna end up on my Ender 5, and I wanted to demonstrate how this technique can greatly increase strength. As you can see with the before and after, the part on the right has been smooth, not for too long, but long enough to let the layers melt together just a little bit. Here comes a strength test. These parts are very, very brittle on the standard design. Give them a little squeeze and they delaminate instantly. On the acetone smooth version, it's now got a little bit of flex and the one on the left does snap, but the overall result is clearly much, much stronger than the standard part. Another print for my Ender 5 that you'll see in an upcoming video are these bed supports. As you can see, we have some layer splitting up the Z axis in the form of these tiny little cracks throughout all of the parts. This set of four just fits inside my rice cooker, but the lid does close and I was able to proceed as usual. The small parts benefited greatly with the cracks being melted together. And for the longer parts, I actually dropped and broke this part off I super glued it and then the acetone smoothing finished the job by melting it back into one piece. These parts are now much stronger, ready to fit, and you'll see that in a future video. Acetone smoothing definitely works. It's been a staple of 3D printing for many years now. However, acetone is not particularly safe or user friendly. And unfortunately, the technique just doesn't work with PLA. But fortunately, in recent times, there's another way. This is the Polisher by Polymaker. In Australia, it's sold locally by X3D. They have an excellent FAQ on their website that explains that you can't use it with usual PLA or ABS. It can fit parts with 150 mm diameter and a height of 180 mm, and it has a range of safety features to improve the process compared to acetone smoothing. To work with this machine, you need some poly smooth filament, also from Polymaker. 
If you're not in Australia, links to the Polisher and the Polysmooth filament on Amazon are in the description. I originally did an unboxing video over on Patreon to show how this machine comes together. The summary is that it's a pretty polished product and it's well packaged and seems to be well made. It has a nice instruction manual and a couple of spare parts included as well. So Polysmooth is meant to be able to be printed just like PLA and for the most part it does apart from the stringing. After increasing retraction and lowering my temperature, I managed to reduce it, but I'm still not quite happy with the profile and it needs further work. After opening the lid, you place the parts on the tray and then laugh at how agonizingly slow it is to close itself. The dial in the center is like a timer and every time you twist it, a light will light up and that represents five minutes of polishing time. The recommendation for most parts is between 20 to 40 minutes, so I went with 30 minutes. One of the main attractions with this machine is that you don't need to use acetone, instead it uses isopropyl alcohol. Unlike the rice cooker, it doesn't heat the IPA either, which is definitely safer. As is at the end of the cycle, when it turns on the fans to try and clear most of the vapor from the chamber before it allows you to open it once again to access your parts. Eventually they're ready to collect by grabbing the removable tray. You can smell IPA, but it's definitely not as strong as the acetone. And here are the results. We have standard on the left, 15 minutes in the middle, and 30 minutes on the right. Just like acetone smoothing, we have high gloss at the expense of surface detail. The foxes are the same story. The longer it's left in, the more gloss you get, but all of the different surfaces seem to melt together and it's no longer a low poly fox. I also tried a single layer vase mode print, expecting it to be stronger, but I found that this filament compared to regular PLA was much less brittle and it didn't feel like the before or the after was going to crack from this treatment. The real reason I got this machine is for my F1 in school's national champions, for them to use to strengthen and reduce the skin friction of their parts. I tested it out on their old front wing design, but was hesitant to leave it in there for too long in case it deformed and lost dimensional accuracy. Maybe some light sanding prior to polishing would be a good idea for this type of part. I present to you the flick test. The end plates are very thin and brittle, and you can see they're destroyed immediately on the standard part, but on the poly smooth part, they fare a little bit better. 3D prints usually delaminate a lot more easily between layer lines, but melting those together definitely increases the strength. Now I do acknowledge this polisher is definitely not cheap. So if you wanted to do this on a budget, there's nothing to stop you from setting up an old rice cooker like I have for my acetone smoothing. Now both of these techniques are hardly new. So I'm gonna to bring to you something that I haven't seen before that you hopefully find interesting and that is making your 3D prints furry. I originally came across flocking because it's used to cover the dashboards of rally cars, giving them the look and texture of felt. Flocking is also used in woodworking to felt the inside of boxes and even on fingernails. The actual flock is this powder and it's like tiny particles of material. I bought mine locally on eBay for a little over $5 a bag. The other things I'm using here are regular water-based PVA glue and some cheap paint brushes. I also used a large clean plastic storage tub. Our final part is a flock applicator and of course I 3D printed one from Thingiverse. It fits together pretty nicely, but to reduce the chance of any flock escaping, I put a thin rubber band around the inner piece, and that means when I put it together, everything is sealed really nicely. The flocking powder is very fine, but still pretty easy to transfer into the applicator. I printed mine in clear so I could see how much was left, although with this color, it's pretty hard to tell. My test subjects are these gummy bears, which I printed with the wrong printer profile, which added a heap of stringing. I tried to remove it with this tumbler I've had lying around for ages, but all it did was make excessive noise. What did work was using a small X-Acto blade to get rid of the thickest parts, and then a hairdryer to melt away the wispy bits. Apart from trying to avoid burning your hand, this is a really effective technique. After about 5 minutes worth of work, I was left with a really good result. I then hot glued some waste prints to the back so I would have a handle, and I got to applying the flock. For my first experiment, I put some PVA on top and then used the brush to spread it around pretty thinly. 
After that was in place, I got my applicator and I used it like a salt and pepper shaker to try and sprinkle the flock on from above. You might want to wear a mask when doing this because the particles are very fine and filled my room. The end result, definitely not enough flock powder in place. I was going to need more glue and more flocking powder. The good news was with my clean container, it was pretty easy to collect the leftover flock and get it neatly back into the bag. I'd say I collected around 90% of it. Attempt 2 saw a much more liberal application of PVA glue and then a much heavier layer of flock over the top. I also introduced a helping hand to hold it for me and I could move it to different angles to get the flock on from every side. This one was looking really promising, but I found that after I let the glue dry, a lot of the flock simply fell off. There are some sections where it's on thick enough and it's got a really nice soft texture, but overall it's far too patchy. I then thought I'd try to mix it up, so I used some spray adhesive on this Pikachu. The overspray unfortunately went inside my tub, but apart from that, it seemed to do a pretty good job. I still think the diameter of my holes was too small at this stage, because I was having trouble getting the flock to come out at a decent rate. Nevertheless, I persevered until I had a nice visual thick coat, and then I set it aside ready to dry. The finished result is not too bad. If I had used a lighter colour with this method, I think I would have got a pretty good result. It definitely feels fluffy to touch, and the flock is stuck on quite well. For my final attempt, I drilled out the applicator to have 3mm holes, and I tried to do multiple layers of flock and glue. The result is still patchy, but once again there's some pockets that are absolutely perfect, and if I could get them evenly around the whole thing, it'd have a really good result. Now clearly I haven't perfected this technique, but I really think there's something in it if I experiment a little bit more. I wondered whether it would be good to have some liquid glue that the part was dipped in, and then another big bed of flock that you dipped it in straight after. Anyway, I'm excited to see where the community can take this, and see what they can achieve. Have you tried any of these before? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe, and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.